Hello my friends, in this video we'll be taking a look at the autosomal DNA uh, traits, illnesses, stuff like that of a Kipchak from Kazakhstan. So this Kipchak lived in the uh, 10th to 12th century common era. His Y DNA was G G2A, which uh, sounds really Caucasian to me, and his mitochondrial DNA is D4, which sounds really East Asian to me. So, in terms of the location, this is the location this individual was from. Kind of um, looks like central Kazakhstan. I'm not a big um, nerd when it comes to Kazakh Kazakh geography. I don't know what like region of Kazakhstan that is, but it looks like central Kazakhstan. It looks like where uh, Kipchaks were from. So, but if you think it's not a Kipchak, if you think it's some other kind of Turk, uh, let me know. Uh, let me know in the comments. We're gonna start with the uh, phenotype. For, for the phenotype, this individual is going to be. Let's see what he's. Let's see what kind of phenotype he had. He's got dark brown color eyes. He's got black hair. Uh, he's got intermediate or olive skin, and this is his predicted eye color here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and and um, dive deeper. Why he's predicted to have such dark color eyes? So, for example, if we just look at the Oka two and Herc two eye color estimator, uh, we see here once again he's got dark eye color. So it looks like he's got uh, he doesn't really have any of the blue eye haplotypes that you need to have light color eyes and hair and the rest of the light features. So we're gonna scroll back to the very end and here we see he indeed does not have blue eye haplotype 2. Uh, his genotype for BH3 is not determined but we know for a fact he does not have BH3 because he does not have BH2. He does not have BH4 either. Uh, when it comes to blue eye haplotype 1 he does not have blue eye haplotype 1 either. However he has this genotype right here which is actually leading to heterozygous genotype in blue eye haplotype 1. It's predictive of heterozygous genotype in blue eye haplotype 1. However despite having this genotype here he still does not have blue eye haplotype 1. So there was some kind of a dislinkage event or uh, maybe some phylogeny that I don't really account for happened here. Uh, perhaps this is some other blue eye haplotype that seems to be pretty strongly linked with BH1 but actually predates it. That's very possible. Uh, or maybe just a simple explanation that he's got a dislinkage in this, in this uh, location that explains this genotype. But anyway, it's pretty apparent that he does not have any of the blue eye haplotypes in Oka2 and Herc2. Uh, it's pretty apparent that it's a very dark color guy. Uh, and we're going to go ahead and check, does, does he have uh, East Asian EDAR? Because that's also here. That is also here. And he has heterozygous genotype in um, EDAR, so he's got one East Asian variant. And however, when it comes to this variation of EDAR, he actually has two East Asian variants. <coughs> <coughs> right. So for one of the EZAR variations, he's only got one East Asian variant. For the other one, he's got two. So overall, uh, very clearly not a European guy in terms of uh, appearance. Uh, very clearly not, not a European in terms of pigmentation. Okay, so... Um, however, he does have some European uh, traits. For example, he has two no-go learner variants in DRD2 spirofrenatine pro variation which causes a significant reduction in the number of dopamine D2 receptor sites in the brain. That's a very stereotypically European genotype to have and it actually causes a reduction in the risk of schizophrenia. Let's go ahead and check uh, his polygenic risk scores. Yeah, so we see he's got a very low score for schizophrenia. Um, he's got very high score for type 2 diabetes and he's got kind of low score for Alzheimer's too. So the very low score for schizophrenia uh, that can be explained in part by this and we're gonna find out what else contributed to that. Um, what's inter another thing that's very European about this individual uh, is he's got heterozygous genotype here which leads to long form 5-HTTLPR and significantly lower risk of depression. Uh, this is once again an extremely European genotype to have and I'm a little bit surprised that somebody this Eastern, uh, somebody who's, you know, a Kipchak, uh, has this kind of 
genotype. Uh, it does not carry the European lactose persistence mutation. He's got two variants for higher levels of empathy in OXTR. He does not uh, does not have the sociopath gene. Seems that seems that instead he has the empath gene. Um, AG here, which leads to higher odds of type two diabetes and obesity. But for diabetes, it seems that not a lot of stuff is here on the screen. Uh, the reason for his incredibly high score is that there is a lot of other variations that are not shown on the screen that contribute to the result. Um, and he does not carry any risk variants for hemochromatosis in HFE's S65C. Um, lower odds of Alzheimer's here, but we don't really know what his score for Alzheimer's is without these two genotypes, which are the most important genotypes. <coughs> for Alzheimer's. Uh, okay, no micro P, no micro P, good. Better performing muscles, likely sprinter rather than endurance athlete. Two fat gene variants in FCOs, RS-99-39-609. Uh, so it seems he's got a little bit of genetic predisposition towards being overweight. Um, no mental retardation. I don't know if I can say that actually here on YouTube. No variance for increased pain sensitivity. All right. And he's actually not an Asian flusher, which is very interesting. So uh, in a certain group of humans in East Asia, uh, a lot of them have the Asian flusher mutation, which basically makes them flush up when they drink alcohol. And it's not only that, it's also that they get much more drunk than everybody else from the same portion of alcohol. It's also that they get addicted to alcohol much quicker than everybody else. It, there's a lot of um, negative things that come together with being an Asian flusher. And he does not have familiar Mediterranean fever, no risk variance for that. Well, he's not a Mediterranean. He's got greater odds of cannabis-induced psycho psychosis based on his genotype here in Act 1. It seems he's got average and higher susceptibility to meth-induced psychosis based on his genotype here and here. So probably shouldn't smoke weed or um, use amphetamines. I don't think those were... No, those weren't a thing in Eurasia in... 12th century common era. Weed was, but not not this. Okay, now we're gonna go ahead and check his ethnic calculator results. Uh, this is who he is closest to with my calculator. <coughs> not G25. Not any of the GD match calculators. You can check that for yourself. I'm showing you his results with my calculator, okay? And with my calculator... <laughs> With my calculator, he is closest to Balshoye Lini Ostrov, which is a proto Uralic from uh, the Kola Peninsula in the Bronze Age. Uh, they resembled, I guess, Hans and Mansi people in Western Siberia. So you could say they are a proxy for Hans and Mansi people. And that's who he is closest to. Followed by that is Punjabi Jats and various other South Central Asians, but Number one here is Balshoy Lini Ostrov. Uh, let's try and model him this way. And we see he's getting modeled as a mixture of half Balshoy Lini Ostrov, plus one quarter Jad from Punjab, <coughs> <coughs> plus another quarter Karakaba Turkic. <laughs> it is what it is. So, um, seems to be a mixture of Siberian or like West Siberian plus. Uh, I don't know, South Central Asian plus Turkic. What if we reduce that to five populations and set distance column to 0 0.5? We see something very different now. <laughs> now we see him getting modeled as a mixture of Uyghur plus one quarter Malta boy. Uh, so Malta boy is ancient North Eurasian plus a little bit of Iranian plus a little bit of Batai hunter-gatherer from Kazakhstan, 
I don't really like this model too much. Let's reduce that to three. When we reduce that to three, we get the model that I actually like the best. Uh, and it is that he is 61% Uyghur, 26% Livonian from Estonia, and 12.6% Bulgarian. So you see that depending on the model, you can actually get this individual to even score a little bit of European components. Although this Uyghur, from my memory, is very east, eastern shifted, at least with my calculator. <laughs> well, thanks for watching until the end. Uh, if you want to see this individual, what they score on GED match, you know, why don't you just download the file? It's in the description. Upload it to GED match yourself and look for yourself. I'm not doing that. Uh, leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Uh, thanks for watching until the end. Goodbye.